Hi everybody, welcome to today's celebration of the Holy Mass from our magnificent cathedral. Thank you for watching. I invite you to join your prayers with those of so many others during these challenging times. I pray for you daily and ask that you remember me too. The love of Christ will overcome any fears or darkness and together we will carry the light of Christ into the world.
Good morning, and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Joseph the Workman. We, we welcome all of our parishioners, guests, and all those who are at home watching the Cathedral's live streamed Masses. Our celebrant this morning is Monsignor Richard Gillis. Please stand to joyfully sing our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the gospel, Jesus demands that we lay down our lives for him to conform ourselves to him and not to the world. For the times we have failed to do that this past week, we call to mind our sins, but most of all, God's great mercy. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak out, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Shadow of your wings, I rejoice. 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he might go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you here. I'm very excited to worship God with all of you uh, this morning. So as we uh, take a look here at the uh, scriptures today, I'm going to first do something a little unorthodox, uh, which is to go into a number of kind of announcements and activities that are going on. But all of this is for a purpose, and you will understand in just a moment. First of all, our CIA deacon, our good deacon Joseph Richards, will be leading that, and I will be tag teaming uh, with him. Uh, so, if you know of anyone who is interested in becoming Roman Catholic, being baptized, 
uh, from maybe a, uh, a catechumen or somebody from a different re religion, or maybe with, you know, like in marriages of mixed religions, sometimes this other spouse says, you know, I want to be unified in my faith with my loved ones so we can all worship together. Um, please, you, I am preaching to my choir, and that means I need you to go out there and to ask people and let the Holy Spirit give you the courage that you need uh, to invite others to uh, be a part of our faith. We're going to be, we're proud to be Catholic. We're not ashamed of that. So let's go out there. Um, my installation as rector is set for September 20th at 1030, this Mass with uh, Bishop. So it would be nice to have a, a nice full-ish uh, cathedral church. Office hours beginning tomorrow. We're going to expand it by another hour into the afternoon until 3 p.m. Uh, Edward will be there. Confessions. Uh, we're going to kind of harken back here to a long-standing institution in the city of La Crosse with this whole region and, and really the whole diocese in Minnesota too of at least uh, we're going to kind of get our toe in, into the water, um, kind of keep um, opening up parish life more and more. So on Wednesday and Fridays, there will be confessions in the sacristy where there's more distance. You can go face to face at a distance or anonymous. And that will be Wednesday and Friday from 1130, like it used to be, until about 1215. Uh, so please uh, spread the word, avail yourself of this wonderful sacrament. And we are going to begin reinstating the 6.30 a.m. weekday Mass on Monday and Tuesday, uh, September 7th on Labor Day. There, there will be no 8 a.m. And that will give our filming crew just a little bit of a break, too, uh, from seven days a week. There's plenty of Masses uh, online. So 6.30, Monday and Tuesday, especially for uh, members of our business uh, community. Um, also, we want to begin reinstating a vigil mass. It's a bit awkward that we don't have one, but we need to build up uh, the group of people who can be there for ushering, lecturing, and the whole nine yards. So that's what we need to start working on. Also, we're going to have confirmation Wednesday, September 16th at 6.30 a.m. with Bishop and First Holy Communion uh, with me on September 27th at 10.30. Um, and so I'm going to try to reach out to those families. Um, it might be a little bit bumpy because honestly, when I was in Toma, I had a DRE who just kind of made it all happen. And I just showed up and looked really good. Uh, I might not look so good on this one, but I'm going to give it my college try. Uh, to celebrate these sacraments uh, with uh, all the dignity they deserve. Uh, like I say, um, I normally don't go into all these things uh, in my homily proper. Why am I doing this? Because I say it with the sense that we are coming back to life. We are resurrecting. We're going to be stronger and better than we ever were. And a key part of us rising up and taking ownership of our lives and our discipleship and our parish, the key part of that is you and others who are not here, but it is you. I need you. I need you if we are going to make this work and thrive. I just don't want to survive. I want to thrive as a parish. I want you to thrive. I need you and you need me and you need this parish family. Everyone here has a place at the table. You know, as a family, what do you do? You chip in. I remember as a kid growing up, I, one of my jobs was I was washing, I washed clothes. And maybe that's why I brought my ringer washing machine from Toma because I'm kind of attached to it and I like it. Um, I know, weird stuff, but that's okay. Uh, you'll get to know even more weird stuff. My sister Jill, who's right here, she loved to polish furniture and watch Young and the Restless, you know? She did two things at once and maybe did the bathroom, I think. Karen, I think, did the kitchen, and my brother Tom, I'm not sure what he did. So uh, everybody had to participate. 
you know, we all have a sense of ownership in our family home. And, and that's what we want to create here is a sense of ownership. So as a cathedral parish, let's be proud. Let's be proud of who we are. And our dream together is to go big, be energetic, to be energized, to burn with zeal for the Lord so that when people look at you, they feel it, they know it. And they say, gosh, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of something that so animates them. And participating in parish life is going to keep bringing us together as a family. Not only as a parish, but as the mother church of the diocese. Our goal is to provide a home and hospitality for all people, our family, our guests who come, like my sister Jill, Frank and Eileen Di Benedetto there from Toma, thank you for being here to worship with us, the whole diocese and even the, the greater community of La Crosse. Now, what this looks like and what it feels like, oh, that's where I need you. I need you to help me envision this and say, this is how we can be family for the community, the business community. This is how we can be family for people coming to us from outside. So please come dream with me. Let's envision this together. I am super pumped to be here and to be your rector because the Holy Spirit is saying, Richard, this is where you need to be. I'm absolutely convinced of it. I'm so thankful to Bishop Callahan for appointing me as your rector. And uh, so let's dream together about who we are and who we can become. And thank you for being a part of this great work. Now, communication is vital and critical in making all of this work. But first, I need to start with my team, staff, my team, uh, that is helping me to do all of this. Um, and it starts with my team coming together and communicating. So on a weekly basis, for the most part, we are going to have team meetings from 9.30 to 10-ish. So therefore, a little sacrifice is going to be asked of you. Uh, the parish office will be closed on Wednesdays from 9.30 to 10.30. So we can ha have time as a staff. Um, so we can serve you better. Then this communication radiates outward from there into the whole parish through our, our parish uh, pastoral council, the finance council. Those meetings are convoked and on the calendar and we've got work to do. Uh, we've got a bulletin now, first time since March 15th. Yes, it's a little rough. A couple of things, just, you know, it's just going to get better, though. Another thing I want to do is minutes with Monsignor. What the heck is that, minutes with Monsignor? Well, uh, I think a way to stay connected, and for all of you and everybody at home who can't be here to get to know me a little bit more, the quirky, weird side, and hopefully the prayerful side as well, um, I want to do these video clips and post them on the Facebook and the web site and then you know it'll be like whatever you know we'll film here in the chapel the vestry the sacristy the rectory outside maybe at the river i don't know so it'll be fun so uh, we're going to start doing that uh, this week so be on the lookout for that now what's on the table in all of what i've been saying is this that we want to offer ourselves in service to Christ, to the body of Christ, to the church, to our parish, to each other, as a way to be in the world, but not of the world. And all of this is leading us to St. Paul's message to the Romans. He says something that's a little uh, different. He says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Hmm. I mean, am I going to be martyred for the faith? Or what's, how do you offer your body as a living sacrifice? How do you do that? Well, 
St. Paul uses the Greek word uh, for body, this one, soma. You heard of somatic cell? Um, soma, body. And it's got a much broader context than this here stuff wrapped around my skeleton. For St. Paul, that word soma refers to corporeality, bodiness, beyond just this physical body. It really refers to our concrete relationship to the world. It is because we have a body that I can relate to the world, that, you know, that we are going to build up this parish through our physical bodies, hospitality at the doors or serving the poor or lecturing or whatever. It's because you have a body, you can do these things. So this is what provides us the ability to have a relationship with the world and to experience the world. So it's this whole experience of Paul exhorting us to offer up ourselves as a living sacrifice. It's a disciplined life. It's a life conformed to Christ, all of our life to Christ and not to the world. And this becomes a holy offering. And this is what I want you to bring to this Eucharist every Sunday. Bring that offering with something in your hands, something full. And take that and bring it to the altar. Let the Holy Spirit sanctify it. Turn it into the flesh of the living God and feed it back to you. Then worship makes sense. And we would never want to miss this. This is what's called O-B-L-A-T-I-O-N. How many times have you heard that since Advent of 2010? Oblation. How many times do you use that word in everyday speech? Never. But it is a very important liturgical word, oblation. Oblation is when you set something aside, it's from Latin, you set something aside for God. You just don't set aside a part of your life, you set your whole life apart for God as an oblation. And that becomes your, your living sacrifice offered through your body for the Lord. God commanded it uh, in the Old Testament, right, with all the slaughtering of the animals, blood, blood, blood everywhere. Because the idea is what was happening on that altar, that animal giving up its life, it signified what was going on inside of you, that you are laying down your life. That animal represented it. Well, the same is no less true for what we are doing here and now. Jesus is commanding us to offer a sacrifice when Jesus says we must lose our lives for him, take up our cross to judge, act, and think according to God's standards and not ours. It's not easy at all. It's difficult. And that's precisely why it is worth doing for now and for the sake of eternity. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Saint Joseph, pray for us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lifting up our hearts in prayer, we call upon the name of God as we now turn to the Father. For the renewal of the cathedral parish and an ever greater commitment to Jesus, the bridegroom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unemployed and all who are financial in financial difficulty, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian husbands and wives, that the Lord will strengthen them in their vocations and make them witnesses of Christ's love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That each member of the cathedral family will prayerfully consider how God is calling them to contribute and volunteer for the building up of this faith community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to carry our crosses in union with Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And with simple-minded devotion, we dedicate the beginning of this day to the honor of your resurrection. May we make the whole day pleasing to your works of holiness, especially all members of St. Joseph the Workman Cathedral for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you are our help. Your kindness is a greater good than life. May we bless you in our daily lives, always calling upon your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, her Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. The body of Christ. 
We have the happy situation of more people attending Mass, and so there will be uh, communion distributed on both sides of the cathedral at the same time. Uh, just come down the center aisle. We'll stand a bit down so as not to bunch it up, bottleneck it. Um, just use your best judgment and, and you know what to do by now with regard to staggering and, and whatnot. Thank you. you keep for 
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, have a blessed week, all of you. It's so good to be with you and to worship God together. Uh, there's no better way to start a week off than encountering the Lord and indeed one another. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bestow increase of heavenly grace on your faithful, O Lord. May they praise you with their lips, with their souls, with their lives. And since it is by your gift that we exist, may our whole lives be yours through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God, Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be, be our, our defense, defense against, against the wickedness, the wickedness and snares, snares of the, the devil. devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.